Okay. Happy long weekend Friday, everybody. How you all doing? Yay! As you can hear, a total lack of enthusiasm as always. We are here on the Richmond campus with the best students ever, even though they never laugh at my jokes or show enthusiasm in my class. We are going to, uh, this is Music 1130, we're going to take a look at a new program that I just found out about called Muse Score. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start Muse Score up. So you guys out there in the audience, audience of thousands, there's a thousand people watching this class right now. There's not, there's 15. You guys are just going to watch um, because if you're trying to do what I'm trying to do at the same time, you're going to miss a bunch of steps. So just even turn your mouse, your mice upside down if you can't help yourself and just grab your coffee and dig in. So here we are. We open up Muse Score, and the first thing you see is the Start Center, and you're going to just create a new score. Ta-da! The title. We're going to call this Minuet in G, because that's what you're going to produce This uh, for this assignment is a reproduction of the Minuet in G photocopy that I gave you. The subtitle is nothing. The composer is J.S. Batch, and... I'm going to put for lyricist arranged by Gordon Cabaruni. Okay? Uh, copyright doesn't matter because this piece is hundreds of years old. So I'm going to click on next. And it's going to ask what kind of score we want to make. And there's all these templates. So if you want to make a liturgical unmetrical and organ, I don't even know what that is, you can make it here. If you want to make a choir score, you can. Uh, there's chamber music, string quartet, lots of different things. Percussion, bluegrass, stringed orchestra. But we're just going to go for grand staff because this is a piece of piano music. Piano music is written on the grand staff. So you click on it. It's going to ask you what key you want it to be. I'm going to put poor Tristan on the spot. Oh, no. He hasn't thought about key signatures for a whole term. Do you remember if we go up one note from the last sharp, you get the name of the key? This is F sharp, right? Okay. If one note up from F sharp is G, does that make us G major? Yes, it does, Gordon. Perfect. Great job, <laughs> Tristan. So. Tristan's face is so red right now. Uh, okay, so here we go. We're going to pick this uh, key signature here. The key signature just tells us if there's sharps or flats in the piece, and this piece is called Minuet in G, and that's because we're in G major. So you select the key signature, you go to next, and the time signature for this piece you will see it's the time signature is right at the beginning of the song, and it looks like a fraction. It looks like it says three four, three fourths. That's because our time signature is three quarter notes in each bar. Three four time we call that. So you're going to select three four time, and 32 measures is actually perfect because it just so happens that this piece is 32 measures long. So now you go finish. And you can see, here's our key signature, here's our time signature, here's our title, here's the arranger, and here's the composer. It puts all of that in for you, okay? So, now you have essentially a blank canvas, and you're going to make this song called Minuet in G. Now let me explain essentially how music notation software works. So you click on a bar where you want to put a piece of music. I'm going to click on this rest here. And what's the first letter in the word note? It's not a trick question, I promise you. What's the first letter in the word note? N. Thank you for the overwhelming answer to my question again. Can we all say N? And. Wow. It's like 
a room full of zombies studying music. We're supposed to be having fun, you guys. Okay, so the reason why you have to know the word N, or the letter N for note, is because we're going to input a note. So to put a note in, you press the letter N and watch what happens. It now highlights that section, and there's a number of ways that I can put in a note. I can pick the kind of note here that I want to stick in, and even if you don't know what these notes are, you can see on the score that the first note in this top clef is this one here. It's called a quarter note. So I select quarter note, and I move down until I find it here. And you see it puts it in, and then it moves to the next section. So now <coughs> you see that there's four notes, and they're connected, and they have what we call a beam on the top. Those are called quarter notes, like this. Or, sorry, um, eighth notes, like this. So we're going to select eighth note, and you just move back on, and you find the note. It's here, G, and then there's this one, and this one, and this one. And now I'm going to press Escape to come out of note mode, and you will see that instead of having all four notes, with one beam, they've just made two groups of two, and that's just fine. Don't worry about it being in a group of four. Um, two groups of two is just fine. So this is sort of the long way of doing this. If you don't read music, um, this is what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to use the mouse, select the kind of note, select the bar where you want to go, press N, and stick the note in like this <coughs> and like this, okay? Now, the other way that you can do it, if you read music, hands up, how many of you read music in this class? Like even really basically? Okay, so there's a few of you. So who can tell me what the next note is in this third bar? E, a very, very quiet voice from a violin player. A few students down said in the quietest voice ever, E. <laughs> yes, that is correct. The next letter is E. So instead of using the mouse, I can just press, and I sure hope this is going to work, can press the letter E. Fantastic. Now, it gave us the wrong E, so all you have to do is hold down Command and press the up arrow on the keyboard. So it'll give you the E that you think it wants, that, that it thinks you want, and you can just move it up or down the octave. So now I can go eighth note, and I can go, these next notes are C, D, E, F. So I can go C, D, E, F. And I just press that right on the keyboard. I press the letters, C, D, E, F. So that's another way that you can do it. And then it goes to G. Now, do you see how this is the wrong kind of note? This needs to be a quarter note. All you do is just reselect and just change it like that. It just lets you fix it, okay? And now I could go another G but it actually has to be an octave down. So I <coughs> press the arrow key to go back to this <coughs> note. I press Command, and I go down. Okay, now it's making a liar of me. Come on, Marsha. There we go. Okay? So that's the second way that you can enter notes. But wait, because there's more. There's two other ways to enter notes in. So I'm going to press Escape to come out of note mode. And where was the keyboard? OK, we're going to find it. Layout, Notes, Add. Ah. Piano keyboard. If we press piano keyboard, hello, 
Now it gives us this here on the bottom, and if I'm going to select this bar, I press note and for note, and I go like this. That's middle C. We want this C. It gives me that C. I select eighth note. Go back to quarter note. Switch to eighth note. Okay, so you can also use the keyboard to enter in values. However, there's still another way to do this. I can also play the keyboard keyboard. It's not exactly right, but you get the idea. You can also play the notes in. And then when you're done, you press escape and you can play it. We go back to the beginning, play my song. Oh, okay, so it's not bad. Some of those notes aren't quite right. So I'm just going to select that note there, which is the last note, and then I'm going to hold down the shift key. You know how on a Mac, if you want to select multiple things, you hold down the shift key and you drag? It's the same here. Hold down the shift key, and it selects all those notes. You press delete on the keyboard. See you later, alligator, and now they're gone. Okay, so there's four different ways that you can input notes, and there's even an easier way to have to avoid changing these notes all the time. The number pad, or the number keys on the top, will change the value. So the number five at the top of your keyboard is a quarter note, six, is a half note. I don't know why seven is a staccato. <coughs> oh, hold on. I gotta press escape. There we go. So five is a quarter note, six is a half note, seven is a whole note. And as you go down, that's a four, a three, a two, and a one. So you can change the notes really quickly. So, check this out. Uh, where are we here? Do, 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 do. Okay, so I'm going to go to F. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Bar seven needs to be an F, and it needs to be a quarter note. I'm going to press five. And I'm going to press, oops, I got to select it first, go into note mode, and I'm going to go F. And now I need to go eighth notes. I press the number four. And then I go half note. That's number six. And it's, what is it? It's an A. I'm going to press up to make it go up. And I have to give it a dot. Oops. So I just select the dot here. See how that half note has a dot on it? All you do is select the dot and then just click on the note and it adds the dot, okay? Because a note with a dot on it, that gets three beats for those of you who don't read music, okay? And then you go back and you do the other clef. So I'm going to click on this bar. I'm going to press N to get into note mode. And our first note is a half note, so I can click it or I can press six. And I'm going to stick it right here. Now do you notice that there's notes that are stacked? Three notes stacked on top? We call that a chord. And to make a chord, all you do is hold down shift and you add another one. Okay, that totally didn't work. That's awesome for me. Let's go back. What am I getting wrong here? 
do, 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 shift key to add notes to the chord. Okay, that is what I'm doing. It's very strange. Huh. Okay, let me escape, unselect, select this once, note value. It's very strange. I tried this before. Ah, there we go. Okay. You're supposed to just press shift and then it should just add it. That's what I just did. If you have problems with that, I'll come and help you solve it. That might be a little bit of a bug. So now I've made a chord. Other things that I might need to do is, for example, if you look at bar 17, do you see on the sheet where there's a little 17? It's the one, two, three, fourth line down. See how there's a double line there with dots? If you, that's called a bar line. So let's figure out bar 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So right here on this bar line, we want to change it to a different kind of bar line. See how there's a bar lines button up here? What's going on? Ah, open this a bit more. Okay. How did I do this now? Ah, bar lines. Right, here it is. So we go over to bar lines, and you can see we want it to look like this one. So I'm going to grab this, drag it on, <coughs> and now it's changed our bar line. Okay? But if you look on the score, the bar right before it, which would technically be this bar, also has dots. So in fact, this is the bar line that we want. You grab it, you stick it on, and now you have the dots before and after. And everything else that you might need to do is pretty simple. For example, if you need to add a grace note, which you do in bar eight right here. I haven't tried this yet, but I'm feeling good about it. <laughs> I'm gonna stick it. Darn it. Knew it couldn't be that easy. Yay! And then I guess we would just put this grace note just by using the arrow keys up, like that. Da -da That's what that means. And if you say, for example, you need to put a sharp in, all you do is select the note and press the up key, it turns it into a sharp. Or if you press down, it turns it into a flat, okay? <coughs> so if you need to add sharps or flats, which you don't really need to in this song, actually you do, in bar 20, uh, 17, 18, 19, 20. In bar 20, you need to. So why don't I go to 17? I'm going to enter in these notes. I'm going to use the number keys to select my notes. And I'm going to use the keyboard. I could use this keyboard, but I think I'm going to use the actual keyboard to play it in. Oh, that's the wrong octave. Okay, hold on. Let's undo that. What's the universal code on the or the universal combination for undo on a Mac? Command Z. Everybody say Command Z. Command Z. Now everybody say Command Z. Command Z. And you can choose whatever one you want, but they both will undo a mistake like this. Uh oh! Didn't mean to do that. I dropped my coffee mug on my computer. I'm just gonna go. Oh. Command Z until all of these are gone. Okay? So, let's go up and up. There we go. Okay, undo, undo. So, using my keyboard in my right hand and the number pad on the computer keyboard in my left hand, I'm going to enter in these notes. So, it starts with quarter note, and then I go uh, number four for eighth notes. Sweet. 
switch. Uh, where am I? There I am. Switch. Switch. Okay. <coughs> uh, but this one here needs to be quarter note, so I'm just going to replace that one. Okay. I'm going to press escape and unselect. So here, let's say we didn't have Let's say you didn't put the sharps in, you want to put them in afterwards. You select this note, you use the arrow key, you make that a sharp. Same with this, you make that a sharp. So you can do it just with the arrow keys and you will have to do that. Okay, next, you need to put in, oh, I didn't put any dynamics or any other signs, but let's say that you want to. You want to put in, Dynamics is what we use to denote loud and soft in music. So maybe we just want it to be medium loud. I can grab this, stick it in there. Yes, I love it. I'm going to go loud here, and then I'm going to go medium loud here. And let's say I also want to have a crescendo. I can grab a crescendo and I can stick it in here in any bar that I need to. You can also use, these are called phrases. If you want to put a phrase in, oh, there we go. Just throw it in there and stick it over top of your notes. So. It's very simple to drag and drop everything that you need. It just goes wherever you want it to go. Uh, what else might you need? Articulation. So let's say you want to put in some staccato notes. You just grab it. You stick it on. Oops. I think you have to drag it right onto the note. And it sticks it in for you. Okay? Or a fermata, which means a pause. Um... What else is in here? Beaming properties. So perhaps this is maybe where we can take these notes and we can put them all together. Not sure. That's all right. Don't worry about that. Okay, so your job is to go through and basically reproduce this score. You have uh, two full classes to do this. And I've never had a student not get this finished, and this is an easier program to use, all right? So I think for now, I'm going to end this video, and you guys can get started on this assignment.